Oh, hello, everybody. Um, today's guest, I have uh, a nice playmate, <laughs> Rabbi Baumgarten. So nice of you to take time off from your busy schedule and visit me. How are you? Thank God, I'm doing well. I want to thank you very, very much <laughs> for allowing me to come up again to this show. And uh, I wish you long and great and good life. Thank you. Thank you. I am. Yeah, that's very true. I have a long life. <laughs> well, like, uh, I think it's God just designated me to stay on this earth for a long time. Maybe I could do some good. <laughs> First of all, you did very good and uh, <laughs> with all your beautiful shows. And we, we give you a bl blessing that you should continue for many, many years of health and helping many, many people. Yes, well, that's pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> do you know that every, every morning before we start praying, we have a line which we say, Hareini Mikabel, I take on myself a positive commandment, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. So before we even get into prayer, we always have to think about somebody, someone else. That, that's <clears throat> actually wonderful. And I, I wish everybody would think that way. I'm sure people, <laughs> everybody thinks that way and everybody wants to try to do the right thing. Yes, well, I've been, excuse me, <clears throat> I've been to your abode quite often, especially Friday nights when you give beautiful dinners and then you you pray and your wife Goldie makes beautiful spread of food and uh, you not only pray but you sing, you have a beautiful voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You could have been an opera singer. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from the heart. Yes, I enjoy listening to you. It, everything you do, it, I could feel that it comes from the heart. Even though many times I don't understand what you say because you say the prayers in Hebrew, that the language I, I don't know. I know a little bit, but not as much as to understand everything and uh, I would like you to tell me and us, whoever is listening, what do those prayers mean? Well, the pray all the prayers which we have are for setting, for set up times. For instance, you have in the morning called Shacharit, we have the morning prayers and then we have in the afternoon called Mincha which is the afternoon prayers, and then you have the evening, the Arvit, the evening services. And But in the prayer books which we have, we have on the right side, we have the Hebrew, but on the left side is the uh, explaining in English, and, and actually beautiful English, exactly what we are saying and what we're doing. So, And when it comes to prayers, God understands all languages. As long as you're sincere, and, uh, and, and God listens to all of our prayers at all times. Well, that's very promising. <laughs> it's, it's good to know that because uh, I'm always afraid what I'm praying for. Sometimes I say, be careful what you're praying for, you may get it. And uh, <clears throat> Well, if you pray for good things, then why not? <laughs> Sometimes I feel that what I would like is very trivial, you know, not important, so I don't want to pray for that. So I'd like to save my prayers to things that I feel is important. That's, I mean, that's I, okay. I grew up, my mother taught me to say a prayer every, every night before I went to sleep, and that's in Hungarian, you know, I'm Hungarian. So sometimes I say that same prayer before I go to sleep, which has almost no meaning at all, but it's the same prayer. Well, we have the 
prayers which we go before we go to sleep and also in the morning. And most of the people know the prayer, and that is the hero Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. I know that. <laughs> I, I knew you knew that. That's the prayers which you probably are saying in Hungarian. Oh, well, no, the one my mother taught me is entirely different. But uh, now that you reminded me, maybe I'll just say that prayer. That makes more sense. Yes, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very important to say it in the, in the evening and the morning. Evening and the morning, right. yes. So uh, you told me that you would like to make this show a special. I'm sure your many of your listeners, um, a thought came to my mind that you invited me as a guest to come on your show today. And I thought that you just had a very big loss. Um, losing a child is very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, you had a, such a beautiful son, Jeffrey. All of Shalom, may him rest in peace. And I thought that perhaps maybe uh, if I could uh, pay a tribute to Jeffrey, um, because, you know, you, you made so many shows and so many different people are coming on, on your show. Um, I thought it would be a, a proper thing to do something for Jeffrey. I would and, appreciate yeah. that. Um, and so I thought today the show should be in, in, in memory of Jeffrey. And uh, it's not only Jeffrey who, you know, we've, we miss and, uh, and, and he's now in, in a good place in heaven. It's called in Hebrew Shemayim. Uh, but also a little comfort for you. We know that the pain and the, and the suffering which you have, which, you, which you, I'm sure you're going through, and it's very, very difficult for a for a mother or a father to lose a to lose uh, their child. Unfortunately, I went through it also, and it's a uh, a wound which never heals. But on the same token, when we do goodness and kindness for the in the memory of the soul, that lifts up the soul to go to a higher level, aliyah, as they call it, and uh, it brings solace not only for. Jeffrey was going from level to level, but also for his mother. Yes, well, you were at Jeff's funeral and you said such nice things about him that it drove me to tears. You said a very nice uh, tribute, tribute to him. Well, I want, what I would like to explain if I may, for just uh, the little bit I have at the time here, um, and as a tribute to, to Jeffrey, and that is that each one of us, all people in the world, and all of us are like, we're, we should be all unified, all people, and for people from all religions, um, we should be unified, and one of the things is that which, 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 uh, which each one of us have a mission. Each one of us has a mission which God put us onto this physical world. No two people are alike. Even people who have twins, they're no two people. And each one of us, each one of each human being has a mission which, mission. God, which God put on this earth. So Jeff had a beautiful mission. He had, a, he, had, he had a mission to fulfill. Unfortunately, he passed away young, but I'm sure he fulfilled his mission, which God put him on to this, to this physical world. Before a, a soul comes into a body, the soul is up in heavens with millions and millions and millions of different souls, and they're all underneath, so to say, the metaphor, underneath of the throne of God. And... As it says in the ethics of our fathers, al korcha atachai, al korcha atames. We have no choice. We're forced to come into this world, and unfortunately, we're forced to leave this world. But the soul, the holy soul, let's take the soul of Jeffrey, doesn't want to come down to this world. Why? Because it's afraid. It doesn't know what kind of body 
It's going to come into who his family is going to be. Are they going to be good people? Or maybe not so good people. And, there, and therefore the soul is afraid to come down. But they tell the soul, you are, you're forced to come down. You must come down to this world. Fulfill your mission. And you could have a, a, a revelation. You know, re, you, you go higher and higher. As they say in Hebrew, Yurida Tzorech Aliyah. You come down in order to have an uplifting, an aliyah. So Jeffrey came to this physical world, fulfilled his mission, and now is the time for him to have the aliyah. Like, you know, you go up, you know, like, you know, people make aliyah to Israel, so here we make aliyah to, to the higher worlds. And it's not in our hands. We don't know why. Many people have many questions, uh, and but... Everything is in the hands of God, but what we do know is that we all have a mission, and we have to fulfill that mission on this earth. So I thought perhaps maybe this should be a tribute to, um, to Jeffrey, and I also would like, if, if I may, also at the, towards the end of the show, to say a memorial for Jeffrey. I would say it in Hebrew. I would first try, I would read it in English. And then I would like to chant it, if I may, in Hebrew as well. But we could do that at the, towards the end of the program. It's very interesting you mentioned the word that everybody has a mission. Because uh, when I was uh, a, t a young girl going to school in Budapest, I, we, there was this uh, author, his name was Yokai Moore. He had, we had to learn some verses by heart, and one of his, the, the things he mentioned was people have missions. That was one of the lines in it. People have missions, and who knows what God wants from them? Only God knows. And I remember that all these years, and it's interesting that you mentioned it now. And from what you're saying, am I to understand that now that Jeff full, fulfilled his mission here, I mean, he left us two beautiful children, that now he's going to come back and be in somebody else's family? <laughs> he's going to be reborn? Well the, <laughs> well, the first thing is that we know that he fulfilled his mission. Now he's in a place called Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, or people call it in heaven, yeah, and uh, and he's that's where his resting place is. Oh, and any time we do a good and special in the year or on his um, uh, on the day of, of his passing, the anniversary day of his passing, um, we do some good things um, in his, for his soul. Even gives him up uh, if even he go even higher level in the spiritual. Um, levels. Yes, it is. Uh, I, <coughs> I or already ordered a, uh, a stone for him. <coughs> and uh, when the right time comes, we're going to place that stone on his grave. I think uh, they're going to give me a date. There's supposed to be how many months after is there a special? Uh... There's really no. There's no really no special time to put up a stone. Everybody has different customs when they do it. Um, I know that some people put up a stone the day they get up from shiva. Oh, really? So that's what people have a custom. Others people have a custom to do it within the year. Which is, uh, very, which is very important. So there's no really set time to set up a, a, a tombstone. Um, but the quicker you do it, the better it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you done this in your life? I'm sure you did. I, I've done in our custom. I could just tell you what our custom is. That we do it, we set up the stone a week after the passing. A when they get it from after. Shiva, yeah. That's interesting. Right. Because... But not everybody has that custom. Also, now that we're going through the winter, 
sometimes it's difficult uh, to set up uh, the stone and people do it when it comes, you know, spring and when it gets warmer. And so they could uh, gather with family and make an availing and, and etc. Well, okay, then I don't have to worry about when the stone is going to be ready. <laughs> I'm sure it will be very, very soon. Yes, yes, I already uh, talked to the people who, uh, who make the stones and they sent me a picture and we described <coughs> what description is going to be. So... Uh, can I ask you, uh, can I ask you, could you tell us a little bit about Jeffrey or maybe a story for his tribute, if you, if you know, I'm, I know I'm quite catching you off guard, but yes, well, if I may. he was a very, very good person. When he was about eight years old, I gave him a, a birthday card with the, the poem from Rudyard Kipling, the name of the poem is called If. I don't know if you are familiar with it, but it's, it's, it's a very, uh, it tells us about if you could do this and if you could go through that, then you'll be a man. And sometimes I thought that perhaps he took it too seriously because he was so good. He endured so much. He never did anything to hurt anybody. And he always did what other people would like. And uh, he was very easygoing to live. He lived with me for the past 10 years. He was very smart. He was especially interested in sports. And he knew a lot about it. And uh, he worked for his early years, he worked for NBC. And then he worked with Bob Costas, who was a announcer. And, and a lot of times when he was watching a game, he noticed some errors and he, that nobody else would notice. And he would call up, hey, you made an error. And anything he watched on TV, he noticed little errors and he would used to comment on it that, how could they let that go by? This is wrong. And uh, all these good things he did, and yet a lot of people, he felt hurt by a lot of people and I felt bad for him. And, uh, but I was happy to, uh, give him a home and I gave him unconditional love and I'm not sorry for that because everybody has faults and just because somebody has faults you don't throw them away. There's a famous song, I'm not going to sing it because I'm going to do the memorial, there's a famous song called My Yiddish Mama. Oh I'm yes. Sure. <laughs> so you're playing, you played a role beautiful with Jeffrey of my Yiddish mom, my Jewish mother. Yes. In Yiddish, it's a, in, in Yiddish, it's a beautiful word, my Yiddish mom, a very famous song. Yes. And that she would do anything for her, ch for her child. Yes. And so you're expressing that very, very well. Yes, I enjoyed uh, make cooking what he liked, and I, I enjoyed it when he liked it and ate it. And I enjoyed giving him a hug and giving him a kiss on his forehead. And he would say, thank you. Excellent. So I'd like to do the memorial, if, you, if I may. Oh, yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first say it in English, and I'm going to chant it in Hebrew. Are you going to sing? I'm going to oh, sing it. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> so uh, the memorial goes, Oh God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, please, Grant true rest upon the wings of the Shekhinah, divine presence, in the exultant spears of the holy and pure who shine as the firmament unto the holy soul of Jeffrey 
the son of Joel, who's gone to his world. And may his place of rest be in Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden. Therefore, may the All-Merciful One shelter him with the cover of his wings forever and bind his soul in the bond of life. The Lord is his heritage, and may he rest in his resting place in peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, I would... I want to chant it in Hebrew. I would like to stand. Okay. If you don't mind, while I chant it. El mole rachamim Well, I'm so happy to hear you. If you were on stage, you would get a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you. It really comes from the heart. Beautiful, beautiful. As I said, you could have been, you could have gone on the stage and be an actor and a singer. Wow. You, uh, we are very lucky to have you at Chabad as a rabbi. You are very, always entertaining you a lot of times you tell us jokes and uh, this beautiful voice is just uh, we are very lucky <laughs> to thank you Frank. I'm very humble <laughs> and I take the opportunity that a memory of Jeffrey yes he should be a good to better to be a good source of asking for good things and special for his mother and uh, all of us wherever who's ever listening and part of it wish you Cold tooth, only good. Oh and God. whatever your heart desires, God should bestow upon you. 
with all the blessings. Thank you so much, and thank you again to take time off your busy schedule and devote this half hour to me, <laughs> because I know you are very busy. You, a rabbi has a lot of chores. We have, we have all the time, as you know, we have all the time, anytime anybody needs any help. We are here to help anybody. And uh, the main thing is the message which I have is that everybody should do goodness and kindness and uh, bring peace into the entire world. Thank you so much again.